Hi, I'm Carletta McMillan, owner of Beyond Revealed Media. As a small business owner, I find my days filled with meetings, gigs, and managing projects. It's hard at times to incorporate new services, balance a home life, and manage staff. After spending time with Mr. Willie James, an ambitious, reliable, humble, and dedicated entrepreneur, he has given me a sense of hope. In this documentary, Willie James, owner of the W Group, along with key employees, staff, and family members, all share their experience of what it takes to start and grow his company, cater to his clients, serve in the community, and fulfill his duties of being a loyal husband and father. Through determination and commitment, Willie proves that small business owners can make an honest living and truly outline their definition of success. Tune in as I take you beyond the obvious and reveal the unseen with the W Group. The world's most dangerous morning show. Be in the mother, be in the That's my dad right here. Oh! I'm Willie James, the owner of the W Group, um, a multi purpose cleaning company and trash hauling business. Um, this is actually my 10-year anniversary with the W Group. Before that, I had another company by the name of United Maintenance Group. Um, I had um, for seven years prior to this current company now. And um, uh, we specialize in trash hauling, um, demolition, demo, um, weekly property, property cleaning and maintenance. And um, I currently manage between, I think, 3.4 million square feet of um, commercial real estate. Just turned five o'clock um, in the morning. Most people are still asleep, but this is what I do. I ride around, I check all my properties out. Um, I see what needs to be done. I always document, let the owners know, like we just finished fixing a gas line over here. And um, hey, we need to get that patch, man, because um, not only the, you know, Managing properties is much more than just picking trash up off the ground and cutting the grass, man. You gotta, you know, you you gotta let the owners know when you got a problem. If you got a light problem, you got a asphalt problem, you got tree problems. You 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 got you you know inspectors come around and they find you for every little thing, and and owners want you to have their back. So. <laughs> It goes back to what I was saying. Say I get emails early in the morning. This from um, Sassy Baloo Realty. This is their plaza right here. One of their plazas just got a, a situation over there in Palm Air Plaza that they need me to. Now they need me to go clean the dumpster area out because they're getting fines because people is throwing trash over the dumpster, over the garbage can. So now I gotta go over there, gotta deal with that situation. Now that's this is. Early morning emails. Right. This is an early morning email. And that's so crazy because my, my morning or any other morning, some for other people, 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Y'all get emails at 5, 30, yeah. 6 o'clock. Yeah. In the morning. Yeah. He believes wholeheartedly that if, if he works it the way that he wants to work it, that this business will survive. My motivation to wake up 4, 30, 5 o'clock every morning is my kids. I want to equip them with the tools they need to succeed in life. So, ain't nobody going to take care of my kids but me. And the people that work for me, ain't nobody going to take care of them but this company. And I have to oversee this company. I have to get up. It, it's, it's, stress, it's stressful a lot of times um, when 10 o'clock hit and you don't be going by 6,000. People still wiping cold out their eyes. It, it, it's stressful. And it's stressful to work seven days a week, but my motivation is my kids, and I do it for them over and over and over until they're in position to win. I want to see them win. I want to see my kids win, and I want to give them the things they need to to win. So that's my motivation. That's my drive is my kids. What do you remember uh, most about growing up in this 
neighborhood. As far as as far as anything, like as far as walking from home from oh, school, man. as far um, as going to the park, like man, what, what connects you to this community? The league football and loud cars, man, man, everything is Pompano Cowboys. Everything, man. Everybody that's from the city that played for the Pompano Cowboys are either cheered for the Pompano Cowboys, or either coached, man. And um, loud cars, man. Everybody, you know came out of Pompano, you done seen a loud car with music and rims, or you don't either have one. So, hey, when you mention Pompano, hey, loud cars are the Pompano Cowboys. After he got um, 18, I told him he was on his own. So, uh, he was still here in the house with me. So, when he got in his 20s, I think that's when he got in little trouble and doing driving with no license and tagging, you know, the typical things, and he said he was doing some devilish thing out there, but I didn't know all this bad other stuff that he when he's might tell y'all what he was doing. I don't know nothing about it because if he did, uh, he been he don't think I've been telling this story, been telling me, <laughs> and he know that too. <laughs> Coming up, Willie was a oh god, was a little busy, a little mischievous, a little. Clown. He was always the center of attention. So the serious side of him, you never really saw of him coming up. You didn't see that side of him coming up. He was always playing. He was always goofing off. He was always not self. He was just antsy all over the place all the time. He was ooh, raising him <laughs> was a challenge. <laughs> from how I remember it, uh, he went from. He would sell DVDs here and there. And then he also uh, used to do these fireplaces. I had no idea what he was doing with them, but I know he would uh, mold them out or something like that or fix them and get them to work, uh, either electrical or smoke, however. He tried. To, <laughs> he was trying to put one in, in my father's house. I, that's a different story. <laughs> the fireplace installation, he took that up. He got into a job where he learned to do that, and, you know, and he did that at, you know, pretty good. And... Um, from that, one thing led to another. When I had started, um, uh, no, nah, I'm gonna get out there every day. I'm gonna do the work. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna be out there, and I, I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be out there and make sure they're doing it right. Make sure they're doing this, and I gotta make sure they tying the bags on the trash cans. Yeah. I gotta make sure they blowing off the sidewalks. You know, I don't wanna get in trouble. I gotta do this. I got, I wanna make sure when I do this and do that. And I start realizing that you trust somebody to do it. You can't go get to work, do the work, and then try to go run down a paycheck, you can't do all three phases of business. You have to trust someone in, in, in at least two of those phases. You can only do, you, you, it's only so, it's so true in business. There's only so many hours in the run of a day when you're doing business. Now when you're working, it's different, you know, let me put my eight in and my 10 in and I'm going home. But when you're in business, you don't never punch out. All these cliches that you hear about waking up in the morning, you got to have this type of money. You got to do this. You got to live your life like this in order to be successful. Each individual that is successful did it a different way. Your way may not work for others. It may just work for you. You have a lot of things that come along with being a, a, a business owner. It's not just I get up and go to work and say, oh, I'm a CEO. Or I'm the president. Like It's a lot of things behind the scene that go on that a lot of people really don't understand or realize until you're in that situation. I'm doing a documentary on my 10 year anniversary for my company. So is this right? is, this is Harold. I've been with this guy right here for the better part of 10 years now. Good guy right here. Best drywall guy in the world. Not the country, but the world. The world. <laughs> I'm showing us some of the house. We do. What we do. I remember Willie actually hustling CDs and DVDs and and to see him come from that point to now being a, a successful entrepreneur is just it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's it's a blessing to be a part of that. It's a blessing to see him grow. It's a blessing to see what example he's going to he is for his children and his family members. I've seen him even on job sites. I pulled up to the job site where they need to dig a trench from like say to the house out to the road. And if they not digging fast enough, 
deep enough, hot enough, or throwing enough dirt. He'll go and take the shovel and literally show them, this is how you do it. This is how you dig it up. This is how you dig it up. This is how you're supposed to be doing it. Come over here. Let me see you do it. So that's one thing I can say. He'll get up and get in the trenches with them. And I think that's another reason why the W group is so successful, that he leads by example. He doesn't stand there and tell them what to do. He'll show them what to do. Like he tries to provide them with all the tools necessary to be successful and to get the job done and get the job done right the first time because that's important too in business that that's one of his major reasons why he's successful.